This thing behind me, this is my Plex server. This Plex server contains over 500 of my Blu-rays. How do I get something like this onto this? Let's take a look. First things first, do you have a fairly recent NVIDIA graphics card? If you do, keep watching. If you don't, buy one. There's some links below. You will benefit greatly from having an NVIDIA graphics card. The reason being is the recent NVIDIA graphics cards have NVIDIA NVENC, which is something that will speed up the encoding of video massively and it will also take some of the resource off your processor. How does it work I hear you ask? Well I am not going to read the Wikipedia page out to you but I will put a link below so feel free to uh, geek out on the ridiculous amount of information that you can read about it. If you don't really care then just keep watching it basically makes it really fast. So there is a couple of other prerequisites that you do need to satisfy before you can encode your Blu-rays in around 40 minutes or less. Uh, first of all, you need a fast Blu-ray drive. The faster your drive is, the faster you will be able to go from this to an MP4. Next you will need to download something called Make MKV and you will need to get the beta key from off their forum. I will put links and instructions below. Uh, once you've done that, you also need to install a program which is free called Handbrake. The detailed description of what you need to do next is below. So let's just get into the nitty gritty. Let's see what we do. So I'm just going to shift to my desktop and see what happens. So the first thing we're going to do is open up Handbrake. And when that's open, we are just going to click cancel to the first prompt that comes up. And we're going to pop our Blu-ray into our Blu-ray drive. And then we're going to click open source. What Handbrake does then, it just scans the Blu-ray to see how many titles are on there. Uh, so if you've got any special features, that kind of thing, that'll show as an additional title or trailers before the film that type of content and after a few seconds Handbrake will have finished analyzing the disc and you will be presented with some previews of the image quality so I literally I leave it on fast 1080p 30 I just make sure that the main movie is selected so we can see here 1 hour 42 seconds uh, sorry <laughs> 1 hour 42 minutes 49 seconds for the haunting in Connecticut and I select web optimized and then I go into dimensions I leave everything as it is I don't touch those settings filters I switch interlace detection off and deinterlace off then video this is where you are taking advantage of the NVIDIA NVENC encoding. So I will select H.265 NVIDIA NVENC. So this will pass all of the encoding onto the graphics card. I select same as source for the frame rate. Now the reason I do that is because if you change it, so this one is 23.98, um, so approximately that, 23.976. But if you change it to like 30, it'll create additional frames within the file to get it to 30 frames per second which will look a bit obscure uh, and the same the opposite if you select a frame rate that is less so I leave it as well I select same as source and put constant frame rate I leave encoder preset on slow that on auto that on auto that on 22 and I go into audio I just make sure my language is selected I'd try and avoid selecting anything that's two channel because that's probably director's commentary. Um, I'll leave all of this the same. I don't have surround sound so stereo is fine for me. Um, you can however have it encoded as Dolby Surround, Dolby Pro Logic 2 or 5.1 but I'm going to have it as stereo and then subtitles I select my language and I leave forced only and burn in selected and what that will do 
is we'll burn into the file any subtitles that are forced subtitles. So, for example, if a character in a film speaks in a different language and there are subtitles, it will capture those and it will burn them into the file. Obviously, if you need subtitles, then um, you can set the default as English um, and you can deselect burn in. Um, but I'm just going to do what I was going to do then. So, forced only, burn in, and English. And you can leave create chapter markers, and then all you need to do is click browse and select where you want your mp4 file to be and the name of it and then once you've done that click start encode and it does it for you we'll just bring up the task manager so you can see what is going on on my pc while it's encoding so what you will see is the gpu is using a lot of video encode so they're 38 percent 48 percent uh, and a little bit of 3D calculation and you will see my CPU is taking quite a bit of hammer but it's not bottlenecking the only bottleneck on my system is now the Blu-ray drive so it's literally encoding as quick as it possibly can based on the speed that it's getting the data from the Blu-ray drive so like I was saying before if you have a really fast drive then your files will encode quicker so we'll just speed things up and we'll take a look at what happens so that's that then slightly over the 40 minutes I uh, mentioned at the start of the video but not bad just under 45 minutes to get this into an MPEG-4 that was just over four gigabytes which is not bad with the settings that I use there is very little noticeable difference between the original blu-ray and the h.265 mpeg4 file and to get that into a f just over four gigabyte file is very impressive storage is very cheap these days so I won't worry too much about compressing it to a smaller size because all you're going to do is lose the quality so that's it for this week's video if you've not yet subscribed, then please hit the subscribe button below, and I'll see you next time.